We are finally installing the cargo bins on this cargo e-bike build. All of this and more in this episode, so stay tuned. It's been a while since the last episode. This is where I left you guys last, where we basically made the entire subframe for mounting the cargo bins too, because I can't just mount them directly to the frame, so I needed this subframe. We put on a battery box, and this is where we're at. Because I'm going to be reinforcing the subframe even more, as well as needing more metal elements to help with installing the cargo bins, I just need to go to the metal depot aka my shopping cart i found and take off some more pieces and to answer your question yes this is actually as fun as it looks This is just some piece of plastic, but let me tell you, this thing was gripping on there extremely tightly. At one point, as I'm ripping this off, a part of it just kind of disintegrates. It explodes and goes into some other dimension. This thing is crazily on there. Bam. I don't know where that piece went. It's just gone. I, I reviewed the footage. It just dissipates into nothingness. Okay, for mounting the rear bins to the subframe, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the best and most efficient way that I could possibly achieve this. There were actually quite a few different ways that I could have gone about this, but I figured this was going to be strong enough for what I was going to use it for, but also being lighter in weight because I was just going to wrap the bar all the way around the lip to hold them like that, but I figured this was going to work work even better. My plan is to have the lip of the bin resting on top of this square tubing like so. I know it appears like it's only resting on those two little molded tabs coming out, but it is actually resting also on the inner molding part, so it's quite sturdy. So these are going to take care of the bins falling down through the floor, but what about the side to side movement? So I have a idea for that, and I'm actually going to use the same square tubing and just have some little outriggers that are going to go and slot inside of the bottom of these little holes right here. And the way I'm going to achieve that is just welding these two little pieces. One of them is going to come right off of that parallel bar and then that other one is going to slot down in there and then be welded to that. So it's going to be looking kind of like this, just welded up. I was going to make this attachment so much more complicated, but it would have been a lot stronger. I just think that this is going to be more than enough for what I'm using this bike for, which is just to go get some groceries. If I was going to be hauling like wood or giant I don't know, metal cannonballs or something, then yeah, I might want to make this a little stronger. But for what I'm going to use it for, this is already going to be overkill. So I showed you the back two mounting points and the fronts are going to be a little bit different. And this is mainly because I have a space where I want the seat actually to go back further into where the bin area is. Yes, I could have avoided this by just making the seat stop before it gets to the bins, but this is a crucial cruiser bike and I want it to be as comfortable as possible and that means sitting back a little bit further. So to make room for this seat area I'm just going to have the bar instead of be straight across it's going to kind of conform around the edges and so I'm going to get just a little bit more space for the end of the seat. I was thinking about just going around the entire perimeter like this so it would be even stronger to hold these bins in but honestly the failure point is going to be the bins themselves. 
if things are too heavy, it's not going to be my structure that breaks. It's going to be the bins that are going to fall out through the bottoms. If I do end up breaking something, I can always just reinforce it and make it stronger later. But I honestly think this is going to be more than enough. I did spend quite a lot of time trying to get all these pieces as uniform and precise as possible, but I was glad to get them all cut up and ready to be welded. So that's what I'm going to move on and do right now. Before I keep going, I just want to make sure and do a kind of dry run test fit just to make sure things are lining up before I go ahead and weld on all the other pieces. So far, things are lining up pretty darn well. I'm pleased with how things are coming out, although I did realize that I can adjust how the slots that go inside of the bins can be tweaked and twisted a little bit more to give an even better fit. So I'm just going to adjust that and then take care of that on all the other ones that I'm going to be welding on. Okay, while I'm taking my time welding out the rest of all those little pieces, I also wanted to address one thing I really didn't like about this bike, and that is the brakes. I tried to adjust these as best as I possibly could, although even with some severe adjustments, they still were not very good. They worked, but just worked, and that's it. They weren't good, confidence inspiring, things like that. So instead of buying new cables, which were gonna cost me like 20 or 30 bucks probably to get that, or even just buying new brakes that would fit this bike, I decided I was going to try and install disc brakes on a bike that never was intended to have disc brakes. I've already invested so much time and energy into this bike already, and I figured I might as well just give it a shot, see if if I could do it pull it off because this would be a cool thing to be able to do because I know there are going to be some future builds where I want to install disc brakes on them even though they're probably not set up for that. My front hub keeps coming loose on its own for whatever reason. That's something that I think I understand what the problem is and I will address that later on in this build. But for now, I just keep tightening it over and over again as it needs it. Another reason why I wanted to try to install disc brakes on this bike is because I already have some disc brake discs and I already have some hydraulic calipers. I was previously using them to experiment with some rear brakes on one of my older builds and I just accumulated like two more brake setups and I wasn't going to use them. So in the spirit of this build of taking things that you're are using and putting them to use that's what I'm gonna do with this bike. The easiest part is just putting the discs on the wheels because they're already ready to accept them. The hard part is going to be putting the caliper onto the frame because there is no thing that just readily accepts that. The other thing that is a problem is that this bike frame is aluminum so I can't just directly weld to the frame so I'll have to figure out how I'm going to be attaching 
steel pieces onto the frame. I will get into aluminum welding somewhere down the line in this channel, but not for this project. These brake lines are both for rear brakes, so they're super long, but I'll have to figure out some way to make it not look terrible. Yeah, mounting this caliper onto this front hub is going to be a challenge. I'm definitely going to have to get creative on where I'm going to actually stick this thing. I honestly thought about how I was going to achieve this for quite some time. I stared at it for a while and there thankfully is only a few possibilities for how I could actually do this because you got the line coming out of it and you either have to attach it somewhere on the top because if it's on the bottom then the line is going to be too close to the wheel. Also, because of how they have to be mounted, this caliper is going to have to sit pretty far away from the frame, so that's also going to be a bit of a challenge. I don't want something that is not very reinforced considering these are brakes and they need to be able to stop the bike. I messed around with this for quite some time and I tried every single possible configuration that I could think of trying to get the one that was going to be the easiest to do. Everybody hates on caliper brakes and think that they can't stop your bike or your e-bike and I totally disagree with that. It's a very unpopular opinion but I've had caliper brakes on other e-bikes and they work just fine. I'm really only doing this as an R&D engineering problem because this is something, a skill I want to acquire to be able to put on other bikes and also because I had these parts laying around. Had I not had these parts already, I probably would have just either rebuilt the old brakes or just bought new caliper brakes because honestly they would have worked fine for this build. Now that I have a pretty good idea of where I want this caliper, I'm going to have to save that for a later date and right now I'm going to move on to installing the front bin. I debated even putting a front bin onto this bike because honestly the two rear bins are probably going to be more than enough for anything I ever want to haul but considering this is a cargo bike I just figured I might as well use all the cargo space that I possibly could. I originally was thinking of just using the old brake brackets because that's a very strong mounting point for getting some sort of steel structure going that I can weld to that I can make the rest of the mounts. Although I did end up using this area because this already has a hole in the frame right there, the fork for I think a fender install really. And then I can just mount that there and then weld onto this with some scrap piece of metal that I had laying around. Once I had made the rear subframe, the rear bins were actually pretty easy to install once I figured that out. And now this is becoming the new design challenge of how to fit this bin to the front of the bike. You might think that since I already figured out how to mount the rear bins and that was going to work out just fine why don't I just replicate that on the front here but I had other ideas in mind. So the idea that I came up with that I ended up going with was just creating a platform for the bin to sit on top of. One of the reasons why I went with this design over something where the basket was hanging from the top was that this is going to be a lot more robust. Sure it is a bit heavier although I can put much heavier items in the front bin because I don't have to worry about the bottom of the bin being the weak point. Another cool thing about this design is that if I make the bin removable then I have a flat surface that I could mount and strap things to if I want to haul them that are wider than one of those bins. While I was thinking about all the different design choices that I could make another part of the criteria was that I eventually wanted to make these bins removable. I wanted this to be modular so that if you were say not going to the store you're just riding the bike for the fun of it it would be kind of nice to be able to remove the bins and the cargo elements of the bike and have it more like a regular bike. Don't worry guys, this is going to be much more reinforced and it's not just going to be this thing floating out in space or sitting on a piece of wood that is resting on the tire. The only thing I don't like about this so far is that it kind of just looks like a square stuck on the front of the bike, but I do have some ideas for how I'm going to mitigate that 
part that I don't like. And the shelf actually does hold a bin and it holds it pretty much where I wanted it. So this is working out so far and I think it looks pretty good. I did make it a little longer and that's totally fine because it's gonna serve as the dual purpose for when the bin is not there. I have a ton more things to finish, but that's all I got for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.